beautiful roads ahead of us and MioCyclo 215 on the handlebars we are ready for some nice training or some nice ride do I like MioCyclo 215? Uh, there is Garmin Edge 530 being launched and 830 being, being launched so it's also interesting topic right now about uh, cycling navigations you've seen me reviewing the uh, cheapest and the most expensive uh, expensive model of Mio Cyclo 215. This is the second out of four. We have sorry, I just I have to help myself uh, with with some info. We have Cyclo 2 uh, 210, so 210. This is 215. Then there is also 405 and 605. This one is exactly 50% um, the price of the highest model 605. It doesn't have, for example, power meter connectability or Bluetooth um, connections. It, it, it's got the ANT Plus, which is not available on the cheapest 210 model. You can do trainings. You can also buy this one in, in the HC version, which, is, which stands for heart rate cadence. So you're gonna have the speed and cadence sensor and your heart rate uh, strap. Otherwise, do I like this uh, Navi? How does it actually navigate? How does it work? And how does it compare to different, very different computers like Sigma ROX 12.0 and Garmin H520 and 520 Plus? Let's see. The 215 has my beloved feature just as other Mio Cyclo devices, which is the screen. The screen is so easy to use. It is very intuitive, as you will see. And also those buttons, if you will, are very large and you don't have to be searching for some crosses or dots. You just tap somewhere on it and it works. So this is great, don't change it. It hasn't been changed for some years now and it will be difficult to improve it because this is very, very easy as you will see in the second. All the info actually are there. You don't need any manual actually for this uh, device because dashboard, that's easy. This is our dashboard. You can change the screens. These are our screens. This is the map. I can move around on the map. We can start the training right here. Tap right, yeah, start recording. This is this is so easy. And then uh, the Navi. Here you can uh, put your uh, home address and it will navigate you to your home. Here you can choose, you can just tap Poland, the city, the street and the number of the house or the place. And it will lead you exactly there. This is just one of the examples, some street. Uh, here in my in my town, Zielona Góra, I can see how far I am uh, from there, um, and the profile of the of my track, super easy. So very good to use. And then the tracks, these are the tracks uh, we've ridden or uh, we've downloaded from internet. This is one of the races, uh, the upcoming races, which I have downloaded from the organizers' uh, website. You can see the length average slope, total ascent, distance to track, so how far is it from here. It will not only navigate me through the track, but also to the starting point or to the closest point, which is very easy and just well working. Uh, here we can stop the navigation if there was some, some navigation going on. You can, um, you can get back to start when you just went somewhere and you have recorded that track, you can go back. And then points of interest like bike stores, there you go, three bike stores uh, found in the town, there are more than three. I think there are four larger bike stores, but three are there, five kilometers, five kilometers, seven kilometers, easy. So this is one physical button, which is the back or return uh, button or switch off the device, easy. History, this is uh, what we've written, mm, some summary, oh, some totals we have here. So, what's that? Total distance, year 2019. That's interesting because uh, in Polish, uh, when the, 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 um, the language is set to Polish, I can see some rides I've, I've, I've made here. I can't see those, interesting. Uh, and then, surprise me, you can either choose to ride for some distance. Let's say you wanna do 30 kilometers, you will set 30, K here or you can go for let's say one hour 20 minutes then 
uh, you choose what average speed that would be let's say super easy ride like entry level ride 20 kilometers then you tap go sometimes there's not enough um, tracks or trails around your place or the distance is too short and it will tell you there is we can't calculate more than two but here we go three you can choose let's say the shorter one 20 kilometers then we can pre-check the track uh, this is how many percent of the unpaved road you've got and then you just push go and it will lead you through some tracks you don't know which is interesting uh, when you go to some new cities new places new trails use this because it is cool uh, one thing to be aware of if you're on the road bike sometimes uh, even on the uh, road bike mode the navigation me or cyclo navigation would warn me to go through the gravel so just just bear that in mind otherwise very interesting uh, surprise me uh, feature and then the settings super easy profile uh, you can create I don't know many profiles um, what's your weight male female and what what's the bike you're riding on so uh, race bike you can set uh, the navigation to avoid uh, unpaved tracks but sometimes sometimes it will still go through such tracks and then run and walk I don't remember whether this was before here run and walk uh, but this is these are the profiles so easy so uh, depending on what profile you set at the beginning of the ride uh, the navigation will either lead you through some uh, terrain or only or mostly tarmac okay then the sensors easy connect sensors uh, if you have the HC version which is heart rate cadence you will also have the heart rate uh, sensor and the speed and cadence sensor it's one sensor so this is it uh, routing uh, here you can choose how it should ride so on the let's say mountain bike uh, you want to avoid major roads but maybe you wanna allow ferries or avoid ferries or prefer ferries that's what you can do so this helps this really helps it doesn't work as I said 100% but it's it helps it's it's okay it's fine so especially for gravel grinding mountain biking uh, some maybe trekking bikes hybrid bikes it will be just fine I like it where I am easy no GPS signal boom there you have it here is here is where I'm recording this video and then the dashboard easy to set up the dashboard here is how many screens you want to have let's say let's turn on the third screen as well and then you can choose how many different uh, how much info you want to have on the screen let's say eight is too much let's set it to I'm gonna show you three and then you can see how huge those numbers are so if you maybe your site is not very good or you're riding in the terrain you want to see those numbers there you have it and finally you just tap each of those and you choose what type of uh, let's say heart rate of data should be there so heart rate let's change distance to um, distance to top cool super easy bravo mio this is this is how it should work very very intuitive and then on the navigation you can also choose the map will be here and then you choose what kai what type of uh, additional info it should include maybe you want to just have the map there we go there will be only map here super helpful and then here you're just managing uh, the history tracks addresses some some very basic uh, stuff uh, and then maps here how it should work auto zoom show cities north up and so um, and then the system so here are some some settings about the screen and backlight timer and so you will just check it out very quickly and you will find out it's super easy keyboard russian bulgarian greek super easy i would say this and the way this uh, device is navigating us are the most, the biggest advantages of having Mio Cyclo device. The calculation speed for the same track on four devices. Two options to the starting point and to the closest point.
Sigma Rox 12.0. to the starting point or to the closest point. Garmin Edge 520. Garmin Edge 520 Plus. Now comparing the maps, I can see that Mio does have more info, like the names of the streets, which um, Garmin, none of the Garmin's have. The Sigma does have some names of the streets. Now, each of these navigations can have different ideas on how to get me to my GPX track, to that uh, racing track. But uh, Mio 215 and Garmin Edge 520 Plus want me to make U-turn, so let's make the U-turn. I have found out pretty quickly that both Mio Cyclo 215 and Garmin Edge 520 Plus have very similar way of navigating me. Uh, the Garmin says left turn in 550 meters, Mio says left turn in 560 meters. Sigma has completely different routes uh, idea here. It doesn't tell me where to turn right now, it, it, it wants me to, to uh, turn around. Uh, and the touchscreen isn't as responsive as on the Mio here. I'm trying to zoom in. It's not as easy as on Mio. So different hardware. Uh, and the Garmin Edge 520 Non Plus only shows you the direction in which you should go. It doesn't navigate. I left the track after a couple of minutes just in order to see what the computers will, will say. I was supposed to go there on the left, I'm on another track here, which is not there on the map. And Mia wants me to just make a short U-turn and then rejoin that trail on the left side. And then um, 520 Plus says, uh, I'm still gonna find that uh, left turn in 250 meters, but it, it shows me I left the track. So as you can see, that little triangle there is off the track. Uh, but it doesn't tell me to make U-turn yet. Mio does. Another difference here is also that the Mio is showing me where I was, even though even if you don't record uh, your your training, let's say, you will see uh, your track on Mio. It's not visible on Garmin. And we are on the way, uh, you can see left turn, pretty similar one on the Garmin Edge Plus and uh, the Mio Cyclone now to the right, Say in the same manner on Mio. Uh, you can read the large screen on Mio much better than on the Garmin, it's okay on the Garmin, Mio is much better for just cycling navigation. This has been the test until the sunset, almost. So what are the best features on Mio Cyclo 215? As I told you, the interface is so intuitive. We, we can do it so quickly. Those very big buttons are great. I love those. Um, what you're sacrificing comparing to 405 or 615 is that you're not gonna be able to use Strava Live segments if you are a Strava Premium uh, user yet. This device will send data automatically to Strava, but not Strava live segments. So you cannot be like here in the trails and see how you are actually doing live comparing to your previous uh, record or uh, to the winners, to the one who is KOM 
uh, owner, so that's one of the things. No power meter, but this is not device for this. This device is not for those who are focusing on training. This device is for people who are focusing on riding a lot, also training with the heart rate, having cadence, speed sensor. I'm not using speed sensor. I'm just using GPS uh, speed. That's just enough for me and just just. Um, in terms of the precision also just just fine um, and for those who love to explore new places Mio, Cyclo, are just good bike navigations 215 has lots of features 50% price of the highest model and it seemed to be much quicker in recalculating the track when I was for the reason I was I was leaving the track uh, it was faster than Garmin Edge 520 Plus, but Garmin Edge wasn't really the, the fastest computer out there, so it wasn't it wasn't difficult to beat it. Otherwise, I love it. Do I have problems with this one? I just have one problem: the lap button isn't there, so there's no lap option. But as, as I said, it's not for those who are focusing on training. In training, I need even if I'm not riding on the loop, doing intervals needs this loop uh, this lap button which is not there so training yes riding a lot yes exploring yes 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 that's meocycle 215